As you can tell, this is going to be a very whiny episode. Here's the clicker. No one would blame you. Also, look at my Twitter. <laughs> the Worst is one of the most hated episodes of Gumball. If you search up the worst reviews, you'll see scathing responses to the episode with many of them doing deep dives on the commentary that this episode supplies, in abundance. I personally never touched this episode simply because there are more exciting episodes to talk about. However, in my pursuit of covering as many Gumball episodes as I can, let's get a not-so-great episode out the way. It starts off with a montage of all the main characters of the Watterson family being upset. And not just a normal level of upset, but actually super mega upset. Enough to melt the people around them. It's such a nice comedic way to portray the exaggerated and cartoonish ways that a character can be shown to be very angry. Nicole is shown here to be incredibly upset. Nice, nice. Wait, no, no! That car had a family, god dang it! It's broken in half! For 90 seconds, we have to be subjected to seeing the Watterson family basically nail the point home that their day was bad. And that's before they came home. So sit down, tell not really an alpha therapist Jay, what has you so worried? Being a guy these days is the worst. Being a woman is the worst. But you know who really has it the worst? Kids! You should try being a grown-up. Responsibility, fatherhood, full-time employment. Avoiding those things is so hard for an adult. Alright, alright, I'm gathering information, right? Everyone thinks that they have it the worst, and no one listens to them. This is a fair portrayal of that, and it seems very realistic in the way that it's portrayed. It also reminds me of the standard male versus female or kids versus adult plots that I've seen growing up where both sides don't understand each other's vices and think that the grass is greener on the other side. This leads into the characters going into the shoes of the other person and figuring out that their life isn't exactly a joyride. It's a time-tested plot that generally walks the line of working just fine and failing miserably. Considering the number of people who had a problem with this episode, you can see where this episode falls. So we're going to peel this onion layer by layer, starting chronologically with the guy's side. There are two things that generally make this episode fail. Firstly, the person who's communicating the issue just isn't the right person to talk about it. Or more importantly, secondly, the entire piece, in this case, the episode, tries to stand on its own high chair and with a little thinking can be easily toppled over by their own logic. Essentially, Gumball and Darwin are upset that they can't experiment with not as masculine things without having their masculinity questioned. Now, this topic is fine to explore and I think many scenarios within this show can work, where you can talk about the issue while also making it fun and sticking to the roots of the way that the show communicates, which is humor. You can have Gumball try perfume and go through one of those cliche perfume commercials, where the character whispers nice adjectives to describe how lovely it is, only to subvert it, and have a guy approach Gumball realize that he's not a pretty girl and beat him up. You can have Darwin try out high heels or platform boots enjoying it a lot. In his eyes, he sees it as everyone pointing at him in admiration, when in reality, they're laughing at him, to which Gumball would whisper to Darwin exactly what's happening and he would break down crying. Or, or you can set up the joke that involves them exploring less than masculine things and having it backfire in a cartoonish fashion. Literally any of these options are much better than what they end up- They don't smell like the chemicals we've been taught to associate with manliness! Quick everyone, question their masculinity in a sarcastic way! <laughs> This is exactly how I would snark someone on Discord. However, it's not to be funny, it's usually because I want the person to understand the underlying layer in what I'm saying, and come to their own conclusion on why they probably should or should not do the thing that they're doing. I'll give you a great example. When a reboot of any show comes out, I'd probably say something like, Oh boy, can't wait to get outrageously mad at this network for ruining my entire childhood, while simultaneously being mad at them for not bringing back what worked before, because while I say I want original content, I really only want to watch the old stuff, and never give the new stuff a try. That's not me making a joke out of a kind-hearted place, that's me being snarky and passive, basically making a point out of sarcasm, that I find a section of people to be hypocritical for what they want. That can work for a reviewer, but for the same show that would make light of morals, and show the main character isn't exactly a poster child for being a role model, this comes across as the staff using the characters as a way to portray a point that they'd otherwise not have the chance to make. This is why I made it clear in the beginning that the characters were mad in a cartoonishly exaggerated way. It's because, I know none of you knew this, but we're all watching a reviewer talk about a cartoon, so expect it to not be 100% realistic, or at least keep its core values in check. But getting to the actual point, you have a point. There are situations where this can happen, however, this goes back to the way that it's communicated. Suppose you did this with Richard, who is a fully grown up person. The message would have made more sense. You're telling me that Gumball and Darwin wouldn't get made fun of just because they're surrounded by kids and kids are jerks? 
Surely peer pressure is something that has a factor in this. Even in a continuity sense, this is kind of flawed. Because I'm sure I can point back to multiple episodes where Gumball and Darwin have portrayed not so macho traits, and were not made fun of at all. Also, to have Tobias and Banana Joe on top of Ocho portray this as the messengers, that's also pretty weird. According to the wiki, this is season 5. After such lovely episodes as The Club from season 1, where Banana Joe and Tobias weren't macho enough to make the team, they were the reserve team, and Ocho was a part of a group called the Reject Club. And in addition to that, the uncle was a pretty large nod to a certain video game, and its potential ties to Ocho, who literally fights like he's in Space Invaders, at the third where Tobias was into video games and The Promise, where Banana Joe couldn't even lift. These are not macho guys either. Now you can say of course, Jay, they aren't going out of their way to portray themselves as not being macho either, and to that I'd say, true. Tobias does have moments where he comes across as a typical pseudo-macho dude. However, that goes into my point. This isn't about macho versus not macho, this is about peer pressure because kids are jerks, but hey, that's an issue. An issue you sweep under the rug to make a completely different point, but an issue nonetheless. Do you think the situation would go any differently if you replace rose scented soap with having the homework done for class but no one else has done it, or trying out a new hairstyle but no one digs it? Come on, simply put, this is the wrong way to communicate the guy's point if you really cared about the issue. If you didn't care about the issue and you were only making fun of it, then you also equally failed because the jokes weren't jokes. They were complaints about a problem that you didn't care about. Either way you slice it, this is flawed. As flawed as Richard's crusty toenail. Huh? Please hurry up and tell us about your day so we can get that image out of our heads. So then we get to Nicole's part, where essentially she inquires why there isn't any female employees of the month. To which the boss would state that having a female on the wall would distract the men. And then who would be employees of the month? Then the boss gives both a potted plant and the only guy you see here a promotion undermining Nicole's work, and only offering advice of smiling more. I'm sure this happens quite a bit, not only in corporate Elmore, but in life in general. And it gets to my second point. While this episode brings up scenarios in which the character in focus is going through a terrible situation, the episode, rather than offering a solution, would much rather come to the conclusion of, well, each character is just going to have to deal with it. None of these characters change at the end of the episode. Spoiler alert, they go through each other's day and come away with, it's hard, but they still don't like their own struggles. So why am I sitting and listening to essentially a very expensive vent? Sure, it's not always ideal to suggest solutions to someone who wants to vent to you. Sometimes it's better for the person to vent and get those negative feelings out of their body. But here's the kicker. Venting usually isn't a positive experience. It can be very draining on both ends and many times uncomfortable. So this is what you decide to spend 11 minutes on? Ask yourself. Why would you rewatch this episode? It doesn't give off a sense of happiness or escapism or even education. It's literally here to whine and like Gumball and Darwin's day, the whine isn't even accurate. So not only am I getting paid 22% less for my work than the men, I also have to let them take all the credit. You're right. That's a very good point, Gumball. <laughs> Where did pay even come in in any of this? The entire scenario stemmed from a lack of recognition. Now, here's the thing. Pay can be a form of recognition, however, Nicole tacked on the pay to a situation of her boss never recognizing her. So again, if you cared about the situation, then you'd want to dive into the core reason why women may be paid less in certain professions, or even in this specific episode's case, why her boss doesn't recognize her. And if you didn't care about the situation, again, you're not being that funny. I hope you notice the cycle. Also, cheap shot, but considering the male to female ratio on this episode, I don't see many men hopping out of their seats to give females their jobs if they truly felt like this scenario happens a lot. Not saying that that would solve the crux of the matter, by the way. Also, also, P.S. Some of those bosses are evil, but you know, let's sweep that little detail under the rug because it can only be because of one thing. So let's move on to the children scenario. This would be the time to roll the clip. Wait, what's that? They don't have a scenario for Anais? My generation didn't ruin the economy and the planet. The house that I'll never be able to afford will be underwater anyway. Oh, pumpkin. An underwater house is called a submarine because it's shaped like a sandwich. <laughs> Don't be grumpy. So, let me make sure I'm clear on this. The One Perspective in this Cartoon Network licensed episode from the amazing World of Gumball, a show that's primarily directed towards kids, the one perspective that you decided not to make a scenario for was the kids? What? 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 <laughs> yes, let's not make a scenario for the kids. Let's cheap out on the one perspective that we actually care about to talk about three perspectives that are secondary to what the show is trying to target. Leave it to the adults who want to target kids to not give any time towards the kids' perspective at the dinner table. 
Who is this episode for? It can't be for males because you messed up the messenger. It can't be for females because the situation described is not what Nicole was angry about, creating a straw man. It can't be for kids because you clearly did not block out time for them. And it can't be for adults either because Cartoon Network has a block for that. What? So what did I prioritize over this? I'm not leaving before I've seen it drop the base. <sighs> <laughs> it's funny because base is spelled the same as bass. Mr. Watterson, do you intend to purchase the fish this time? No, he isn't. And this is why being an adult is so hard. Here's the final and biggest problem of them all because this is a show directed towards kids on Cartoon Network. The episode has a huge clarity issue. It's trying to give commentary within the first three because yes, they did designate Anais a whopping two to three sentences to describe her struggles, half of which mind you was her venting about her future and not her present like Gumbo, Darwin, and Nicole. But then when it comes to Richard's scenario, it's very clear that Richard is in the wrong and this is not commentary on the hardships of being an adult. If anything, the fact that his entire day would consist of this helps Anais's point rather than diminishes it. And maybe that's the reason why they don't focus on Anais that much, to not make it completely demolish Richard's reason to be angry. But guess what? Richard did that by himself. This is the equivalent of me arguing that cartoons aren't just for kids by using the examples of Family Guy, Teletubbies, and South Park. If you're gonna make a point, have your reasons clear. And this goes against your point because, if anything, Adults were the ones who muddied it, thus soiling any commentary, and kicking the soapbox that this episode really wants to be on. So they all challenge each other to be in each other's shoes, which is funny because Richard doesn't want to grow up and also warns Anais that his shoes are a challenge. So guess what? Out of the 11 minutes, how much of it is actually spent on who had the worst day? Three! That's not even half the episode. That's because most of this episode is spent complaining and not doing anything. Yes, they have scenarios in which it would be annoying in those instances. However, again, showing me the problem, especially in those warp lenses and no solution, means at best you made a bad attempt. If Richard's scenario had to do with the fact that he got no respect from Larry, how come Anais has to live the life of someone who's aging? Wouldn't that mean that Richard's scenario would have to do with the aging pains of being an adult? Of course not, because again, the episode didn't care about the child scenario. Ugh, come on, grown-up imagination, give me everything you've got! <laughs> Forget it. I'll just file this along with all the other hopes and dreams adults have. I don't know about you, but I want some Frosted Flakes right now. I don't have the time to talk about why Anace's entire subplot just spits in the face of Cartoon Network, the show, General Logic. I would be here for 10 minutes. But imagine all the people who have desk jobs at Cartoon Network. Wow, adult you, you have zero imagination. And I would not want to live in your shoes. But continue to do your desk job because we need it. Almost as if creativity is only half the battle in problem solving. Anyways, because I can see a big bowl of frosted flakes right in front of me, let's just finish this. Gumball and Darwin attempts to go to the top floor with all the executives but get prevented by the glass ceiling. This doesn't work because if you wanted to portray this effectively, you'd also show the aspect of women doing their jobs as good or as better than guys, and then show that even with the effort they're not getting anywhere. But let's water down the watered down point. Richard goes through exams and studying. This doesn't work because Richard is stupid, and if he went to college, he'd have the exact same struggles. And moreover, Anais's point was about no one recognizing her, which is ironic because she's a female, and even the writers who wrote her motivations didn't care enough to take them into consideration. Oh, and also take into consideration that Anais wouldn't mind studying or taking exams because, oh wait, that's her passion. We literally had an episode where because of how great she scored on a random exam, Darwin was going to get taken away because he was literally too smart for the family. Nicole gets trapped during construction. This doesn't make sense because for a job, it literally requires help and direction. I don't know about you, but I don't see that many one-man construction crews around, so they all come to a consensus. Guess we're all agreed. Everyone has it equally bad. Well, no. Actually, there are some real imbalances that... Exactly. Turns out everyone has it the worst. No, oh, no, that's the problem. Men just don't listen. Women always get cut off in the middle of their... Beautiful. Never have I been so confused and disappointed with an episode. There are episodes where I can pinpoint exactly what can be changed to make it okay, like the sweaters or the web. But who wanted this? In the same series that has an episode about Gumball wanting to be slapped on the butt, it seems like this episode just doesn't fit in. I want to say clearly that if people did have issues that they wanted to convey here, I would sit down and listen to them. However, in this context, this show was made for entertainment and smart comedy. While a mixture of both, 
It requires a level of craft to put into the humor. Whereas a lot of this seems like something I'd hear in a bad Rick and Morty episode. I'd want to hear from you guys. If you haven't seen my review of the web, check that episode out and see which one is worse. There are a few episodes that I think may outfail this one, but until then, big thanks to the supporters of December, and until next time, I'm gonna go get some Frosted Flakes.